Hi everyone, my name is Neha and this is the 14th lecture on electronic communications. In this lecture, we are going to learn about fiber optics and this is the second part of that lecture. The primary difference between the light waves and the radio waves is the frequency. The frequency of the light waves is usually higher and they have a shorter wavelength. The frequency of the light waves, it lies in the infrared region, which is invisible to human eyes. Infrared lights, they are used because fiber optic core material generally have the lowest signal loss at these frequencies. For multi-mode fibers, it is designed to operate at a 850 nanometer and 1300 nanometer. And single mode fibers, it is op it is optimized for 1310 nanometer and 1550 nanometer so most common wavelength actually used in the fiber optics are the 1850 nanometer 1300 nanometer and the 1550 nanometer next is propagation of light in fiber so light can move in fiber in either a straight line or a zigzag pattern when the light waves moves in a straight line, then that is called your single mode fibers. And when the light wave moves in a zigzag pattern or when it uh, takes, takes several paths to reach to the destination, then that is called your multi-mode fiber. So we are going to learn about single mode and multi-mode fiber later in this lecture. Now the light waves in the fiber optics, it tends to move in a straight line unless something interferes with it. And there are three waves by which this light wave in the fiber optics, it can made to alter. And these three methods are all mentioned over here, reflection, diffraction and refraction. In reflection, to make a good optical reflector, it requires a polished conducting surface. Some of the fiber optics do not rely on the reflection. Next is your diffraction. In diffraction, light wave signals that undergo diffraction, they become slightly blurred or distorted, which limits the bandwidth and also drastically reduce the received energy at the fiber optic receiver. Now third is refraction and refraction is the mode of fiber optic transmission. Fiber optics, they mainly rely on the uh, mechanism of the refraction for conducting light wave down to the core. Basic need in the fiber optic is to keep all the light within the fiber core so that the maximum signal uh, can be transferred to the other end of the uh, receiver side. And this can be accomplished by using the fiber optic core with a tube of shiny metal because when you have the shiny metal tube then all the light waves they will be reflected and they will try to stay within the uh, fiber optics core. But with the use of refraction, we can actually eliminate the need of a shiny metal reflector and still we can keep most of the uh, uh, fiber optic rays or light rays uh, of the signal within the fiber. So here in this picture you see uh, if, the, if the light wave uh, signal is uh, equal to or greater than critical angle, uh, then they will uh, stay within the core uh, and if it is not equal or greater to the critical angle then the signal will go into the cladding. So this gray portion shows the cladding and this uh, green portion shows the core of the fiber optics. As you know the fiber optics they cables they have core and cladding and these core and cladding their indices of refraction are different. Cladding has a slightly lower index of refraction when compared to the core and because of this reason uh, when light enters the fiber core at an appropriate angle it is refracted back towards the center of the core when it tries to escape through the clad cladding. So here now one thing to remember is that for the light rays uh, in the fiber optics to stay within the uh, within the core they must approach the wall of the cladding at an angle at least equal to or greater than the critical angle for core cladding junction so you can see here this wave is entering here at this angle and this wave a uh, light wave is greater than the critical angle and if it is greater then it will refract and it will 
basically stays within the core. Now here you see the example of a light wave uh, which is not refracted and it is lost in the cloud link. You can see here uh, the example of that ray uh, which is in blue color and it is uh, it is entered at a insufficient angle and uh, as you can see here and uh, because of this it, it will not be refracted and it will enter into another uh, medium which is the cladding and where it will be. Uh, lost whereas uh, this uh, waveform you see it is uh, greater than in equal to critical angle and it is entering at a uh, at a correct position and due to which the this uh, this light wave will be refracted and it will stays within the core now next is uh, numerical aperture and acceptance cone so by knowing the indices of a refraction of the core and the catling material we can calculate the two important properties of a fiber optic cables and these are mentioned over here numerical aperture and the acceptance cone, uh, cone angle numerical uh, aperture uh, it it tells us how well a fiber can collect light at its end where light source would be coupled and it will be given by this formula n a is equals to under root n1 square minus n2 square where n1 is the index of refraction for fiber core and n2 is the index for cadling uh, material so when the numerical aperture it increases uh, it is easier for the light to go into the fiber and maximum possible value for a numerical aperture is one and a high value of numerical aperture it will allow more propagation modes to uh, coexist within the fiber and this leads to uh, pulse spreading or dispersion uh, which reduces the bandwidth now next is the acceptance cone angle and i will uh, move on to the next screen to show you what acceptance cone angle is so you can see here uh, this angle uh, shows the acceptance cone angle and uh, it is the total angular range uh, of light rays uh, that the fiber accepts and propagates so you can see that all the light rays they are entering through this uh, cone region and it goes to the core of the uh, fiber optic cable now going to the back and this acceptance cone angle is uh, uh, is given by this formula uh, where theta except is equals to sine inverse n a n is the numerical aperture and uh, this theta except is the acceptance cone angle so by these two formulas we can calculate the numerical aperture and the acceptance cone angle uh, let's read here because of the limit of the critical angle for refraction not all rays can be coupled into the fiber rays so some of the rays uh, they will get into the cladding and the only rays which stays into the core that will uh, be considered under the acceptance core uh, angle now next is the propagation mode uh, and uh, and dispersion so there are two propagation modes first is the single mode propagation and second is the multi-mode propagation and uh, let's read here light wave uh, can move down optical fibers in many different waves a propagation mode is one particular type of light wave path in a fiber optics so let's let's see what is a propagate what is single mode and what is a multi-mode so a single mode it is the simplest propagation in this the light wave it travels straight through the fiber optic from one end to the another end and because all the light rays it uh, they arrive in steps with each other in a single mode fiber uh, very little distortion of the signal actually occurs and in a single mode uh, propagation uh, the diameter of this type is very small it is usually less than 10 micrometer and uh, with the small diameter it has some restrictions and restrictions are that in single mode it uh, it cannot operate for uh, higher uh, higher modes uh, which means like uh, more rays cannot fit into the uh, single mode due to the restriction of the diameter uh, 
let's read here uh, light travels in a straight line uh, the core must be less than a wavelength thick to encourage this mode so this was the single mode now second is the multi-mode uh, propagation and in multi-mode propagation you see here there are different uh, light waves which are entering into the core of the uh, fibers and when the width of the fiber core is more than approximately two wavelength of the light uh, then the multiple propagation model uh, mode uh, this mode becomes uh, available but there are some problems with uh, multi-mode uh, because in multi-mode uh, uh, each of the light rays you see, uh, they travel at a slightly different distance as they move through the fiber. And for example, if you compare the light ray, light rays, uh, which is uh, red, um, and and you see here, uh, this is going through uh, two two uh, uh, two bending. Uh, first is here, and then second is over here. Whereas if you see this brown light wave, it, it only goes through the uh, one angle or one bending and then directly it goes to the end of the core so you see there the red uh, light wave it has traveled the longer distance when compared with the brown worm so we un uh, so we see that uh, all light waves they do not arrive uh, at the end at the same time and uh, this is actually a distortion and this distortion uh, uh, the distortion caused by this effect it is called your model dispersion uh, so we're going to see that next uh, first uh, read here uh, light, a light ray can take many paths all paths are of different lengths causing dispersion and pearls spreading so so let's see next so now here uh, we're going to see the pulse effect in multi-mode propagation. You see this is the original pulse uh, which is uh, going into the fiber uh, optics and uh, this is the image of the pulse when it is halfway down in the multi-mode uh, fiber and you can see that uh, due to model dispersion uh, it causes the edge of the digital pulse uh, to be rounded off and uh, and as the pulse goes to the end of the fiber uh, fiber optics it it looks like this so longer the fiber the worse the distortion becomes and pulse at the end of the fiber it appears to have the have that wave uh, very much like uh, like as if it had passed through the rc low pass filter circuit so this widening effect you see here this widening pulse this widening effect on the pulse is what limits the bandwidth of a multi-mode fiber and this uh, bandwidth you can calculate by using this formula you can see here a bandwidth is equal to 0 0.35 by tr where tr is the rise time and in multi-mode fiber the rise time can be estimated as the difference in the time between the arrival of the first photon uh, of a light pulse and the last photon of the same pulse so the effective rise time uh, formula is is given over here uh, tr is approximately equals to delta t and and which is approximately equal to n1 l by c uh, bracket n1 by n2 minus 1 where this tr is the rise time due to modal dis, uh, dispersion and uh, c is the speed of light n1 is the refractive index of the core n2 is the refractive index of catling and in the model uh, dispersion uh, it will it will get worse uh, when you increase the length this is the length uh, length of the fiber optics so as you increase the length of the fiber then what will happen the the model dispersion uh, this will get worse this tr will increase so which means that the dispersion will be uh, very very bad so the equation, uh, this shows that the ratio of refractive index uh, for the core and the catling, uh, uh, it controls the amount of uh, uh, dispersion. And closer the value of the refractive indexes, you will get the less dispersion. And better pulse shape uh, will appear at the end of the uh, fiber optics. Uh, but there are other things also if uh, n1 and n2 they are they their refractive index gets closer then the uh, numerical aperture and the acceptance cone of the fiber optics it will shrink 
and making it difficult for the light wave to uh, get into the uh, fiber core. So here this picture shows the same phenomena of uh, dispersion when the information signal is sent, uh, a digital signal. Then in the uh, fiber optics, uh, the signal will look like this uh, due to the dispersion. So we know that this dispersion problem uh, in a multi-mode fiber, it arises because of the difference in the time between the various uh, possible light waves uh, uh, passing through the core. And this problem can be avoided by using the graded, you see here, this is the graded index fibers. And with the help of graded index fibers, uh, they, they have a special core uh, with a changing index of refraction. Uh, and, and because of that, uh, the, the dispersion problem can be avoided. So, what exactly happens in the graded index fibers core uh, is that the center of the core, uh, it is designed with a higher index of refraction when compared to the outside edge of the core. So, therefore, when the light waves, uh, it, uh, it passes uh, through the center of the core, it slows down and speeds up as it approaches the edge of the, uh, edge of the core. So main idea here is that the graded index fiber, it controls the dispersion by slowing down the wave near the center of the core in order to allow the higher order waves to arrive at the same time. Now next is the summary of this lecture. So I'll quickly read all these points. Uh, a fiber optic cable consists of a light wave conducting core, a light wave uh, containing a cat, uh, cladding, and in most cases, an outer jack, uh, which affords mechanical protection. Light waves can be reflected, diffracted, uh, and refracted as they move between the two points in space. Refraction is the mode of propagation in the fiber optics. Accepted cone angle gives one half of the total range of the entry uh, angles for light waves into a fiber. And propagation mode describes a particular type of available light wave path within a optical fiber. And lastly, uh, model dispersion limits the available bandwidth of a fiber by stretching out the rise and fall time of uh, digital pulses. And it gets worse as a fiber is lengthened. So this is the end of the lecture. Uh, thank you so much for watching.